Hi, I'm going to show you how to install and set up this. I'm also going to have a little overview on what it's like for noise and stuff. It's the um, Asus GeForce GT610. This is a low profile graphics card. Let's see exactly what it does and how it does it. So first thing you want to do is go into your device manager in Windows by going to start and then right clicking on computer and clicking properties. Take it to this window here and you want to click device manager here. Once you're in device manager you want to find your display adapter. In our case it's the Intel G33, G31 Express chipset family. You want to uninstall or disable even better. You want to click disable. This will then put everything in VGA mode as if you haven't got no drivers installed. Not a problem. Once you've done that you want to click shut down and just wait for your computer to shut down. Once it's shut down we can begin installation of the graphics card. Your graphics card should be installed in this PCI slot here. It will then be facing this back plate here, which you can't see very well. Once this is installed, your default video output will not be that one. You'll stop using that one and you'll have to start using your graphics card. Hence why you're installing it. So this is PCI Express. This is a modern version of the graphics card port. Let's install this graphics card. The first thing you want to do is you want to pick your graphics card up, preferably by the heatsink, and then you want to turn the power off on the PC using power button and unplug your power supply. You want to then grab your graphics card, slip it in, try to be very careful, line it up carefully and just push until it's in. The screw hole should line up perfectly. If it isn't, you may not have installed it correctly and you want to see where you've gone wrong. All the golden pins should be invisible. They should be should not be visible, they should be in the slot. So now we've installed the graphics card, which is the easy part, you can then plug your VGA into it. Now I am going to screw this in, so I'm going to put the camera back over here. The reason you want to screw it in is it secures the graphics card and ensures a tight contact between the PCI slot and the graphics card connectors. Where's my screws? So you want to use a standard screw. In this case, this is what I'm using. So, not that you can see much there. Just screw it in, <coughs> plug your VGA in, turn your PC on after plugging it in of course. Everything should fire up nicely. You want to then open your graphics card box up, take out all the packaging, you want to find your driver disc, that there. That will sort out drivers until you can find the later version online. <coughs> so just starting Windows up now. And what we're going to do whilst it's starting Windows up, we're going to put the disk in the computer. So your graphics card is installed, and it is fairly quiet, so that's a good sign. What Windows is doing is searching Windows Update for pre-configured graphics drivers. This saves time and 
allows you to get away with not installing the disc. Doing it this way can pose problems with Nvidia cards and Windows XP. I'm not sure about Vista and 7. Windows XP, the Nvidia drivers basically disable any colour schemes of anything in um, in Windows XP. <coughs> it actually causes causes the worst jobs. Don't install any Nvidia graphics card drivers updates. So it's downloading 179.9 megabytes for your video controller VGA compatible. That is your graphics card chip. So the 179 meg reassures me that it's downloading the official NVIDIA drivers. So I'm going to allow it to carry on. Now the NVIDIA HD um, audio for the HDMI has already installed. Windows 7 found drivers for that already. The onboard HD audio allows you to uh, carry audio through a HDMI cable to a TV instead of having to use a separate fly cable from a sound card. <coughs> While that's downloading, I'll introduce you to the PC that we're working on today. So it's nothing special, really isn't. It's not high-end gaming rig or hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of equipment it's purely and simply a little PC motherboard it's a 775 system with a dual core Pentium nothing out of the ordinary um, it's an ASRock motherboard I think the motherboard cost around £40 um, we do have USB 3 additional um, may I also let you know these cards for USB do not provide the full USB 3 speed um, I can't remember exactly how much they do provide but I know it's not the full amount uh, because PCI Express mini slot hasn't got enough bandwidth to well handle USB 3 <coughs> um, so we've got two hard drives one's uh, I think they're both terabytes actually I'm not sure um, we've got two hard drive bays this is our workshop machine so we use them all the time for testing hard drives and the only cooler we had to spare at the time, even though it seems over the top, is a Cooler Master V8. So we're using that. <coughs> um, <coughs> the other cooler we had to spare was just too noisy. So we didn't want to use that at all. Now we've got our RAID card underneath here. We're using that to route our hard drive bays to allow hot swapping during Windows. And we've got our Corsair CX600 power supply, which is extremely overkill for what we need here. <coughs> so let's put you back down. Sorry about the cough. <coughs> so it's just installing the drivers. And it shouldn't take too long now. So let me go over a few features of the graphics card. It features the new capacitors which allow it to um, last a lot longer. You get 15% performance boost, 2.5 times longer lifespan and 35 degrees cooler operations. The fan is dust proof apparently so you won't get any dust on your fan, I beg to differ. Um, GPU tweak, uh, real time graphics tuning, I'm not sure exactly how that works, might be a minor overclock, it might not, um, might just be optimization. One gig of DDR3 memory, it's going to be 64 bit memory, so it's not going to be fast, it's going to be quite slow, and you are not going to be able to game with that, so don't buy this graphics card and hope you're going to be able to play all the modern games on high settings, you will not. Um, this is barely a means of putting HDMI to a computer that doesn't have HDMI and being able to stream HD video and watch HD content such as Blu-ray and stuff. Um, but small non-aggressive games will play on low settings with these cards. They're not all bad, they're pretty good. and. You get the reliab the reliability you don't with the larger cards. So that's finished installing. It's going to nag me to restart now. Go away, Java. We don't want you. 
So let's restart our computer and see if the graphics drivers have installed properly. Um, let's put that in there. Spooning into Windows. Hopefully, this has all gone well and we haven't buggered anything up. So the graphics drivers have installed and what I'm going to do now is test the WEI so let's see where it gets in that so we're going to update this, it did score quite low a 3.1 uh, the bottlenecks funnily enough were the graphics what do you expect from onboard Intel yeah yeah, the only the only onboard graphics I have time for is Intel HD 4000 and the new AMD APU on die chips. Their graphics, they are worth fiddling around with. So that's just uh, running direct 3D9 texture load assessment. So whilst that's doing that, I've got a few things I could be doing, so I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so I'm back. The WEI has, um, well, has finished. And the score is still 4.6. I can't remember whether I said it was 4.4 or 4. No, it's 3.1. So the score has gone up quite a bit. So let's have a look at where it's improved. Now I'm sure it's improved on the RAM. It usually does when you go from onboard to a dedicated GPU because it's not using shared memory. It has its own dedicated mount. So we've got 4.6 for the Windows Aero graphics and 6.4 for the gaming graphics. So it has improved it slightly. Now, what I have noticed about this is the graphics card has gotten very, very noisy. I don't know if you can hear that. But it has decided it's going to get very, very noisy. So, I'm um, a little bit disappointed on that. Um, high noise output isn't exactly what anybody wants on their graphics card. It's very, very annoying. And, well, we just don't want it really it's not going to be good for a media machine you're going to, you're going to want to sit down and watch a film silently so um, that about wraps up um, my little review of the graphics card um, apart from a couple of things I'm going to try out actually I'm going to try and stream some HD stuff on YouTube I'm just going to skip this ad. So we are now watching this in 1080p. There is quite a bit of lag there. So I'm not sure if the graphics card is coping or not. It's lagging quite a little bit there. The image is crisp, 
but the frame rates are dropping so I don't think it's quite up to the job really so that about covers everything that I needed to show you about that um, I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to rate and subscribe thanks for watching